Hey, it's Jag, and today I'm at the lonely end of the shop. Well, I'm going to read a couple of definitions to you first here uh, before I tell you what this video is going to be about today. The Cambridge Dictionary Online defines productive as having positive results. The dictionary also describes uh, procrastinate as delaying doing something. So what does that have to do with what we're doing today? Well, today's episode is called What's TAP? T-A-P-P. -P. Uh, TAP stands for The Art of Productive Procrastination, and uh, that's what I'm doing today. This video isn't really about my great guitar build-off uh, build or the, uh, the, the 2 plus 1 amp build. It kind of relates to both of them, and it relates to um, being so distracted with things that you need to do that you can't do what you want to do. There's just a little too much clutter, and I spend a lot of time moving stuff around. As I said, it's a small space. Uh, I've got things on wheels, um, and so I can move them out of the way. But down here at the lonely end of the, the shop, stuff just piles up. So I want to deal with that. So I have way more than I think I'm going to get to today, but I have three jobs in particular that I really want to do. Um, the first one is uh, my shop lights. Uh, I've had shop lights for about four or five years and just haven't gotten around to putting them up. Right now I'm using my, uh, my RGB uh, flat panel LEDs and they're getting a little bit dusty out here. Uh, they got knocked over all the time so I'm always constantly straightening out the, uh, the, the, the frames that they pivot on. So I want to get those back into the studio where they belong. Uh, it's just too harsh out here for them. I have two sets. I have uh, this set with two lights, uh, which I want to um, probably put up, there's a beam above where I generally stand, and I'm going to put these uh, up there, and they'll kind of shine on the, on the sort of rear work areas or sort of side work areas uh, where, beside where I stand, and, and provide me some light direct down over my table saw or whatever I have in front of me. Then I have this set of uh, four lights. And these ones I'm going to put up uh, just on this beam at the end of, end of my loft, which is right above where I am right now. With those four lights uh, up there, they all are positionable, so I can pivot them to, to point generally to whatever I'm working on over at this end of the shop, or even point them to the end where I'm usually working. They're basically right above where I work as well. So I figure that's the best way to get... Uh, to get lighting in the shop. I bought uh, 5,000 Kelvin LED uh, daytime rated lights. Uh, so it's going to be very bright. Um, those are the same bulbs that I shoot with down in my electronics shop and I like the way uh, the videos look down there. Uh, so that will have this shop have a similar look to when I'm working in the uh, in the electronics shop. Of course when I'm doing things in the studio um, I try to do a little bit more uh, work with the uh, the feel of, of the lighting and that's what my RGB flat panels are for. I also have two bicolor flat panels that I use in the studio. Oh and by the way, uh, the back garage door, uh, the spring is broken so I can't really open it right now but I want to get that fixed so that when it's warm in the summer uh, I can open that up and get some fresh air in here and it, it just feels like I have more room when that's open as well. And that's why the four lights are going up here across this way. I wanted, I thought about putting them across this way but then I wouldn't be able to open the garage door. So the other thing that I want to do is uh, today is relates to these cabinets that are over here on, on this side of the shop. My table saw is on wheels. Uh, my planer and my router table are uh, easy to move around. One of the things I want to do is put casters on them at some point. I, I have casters. I don't think I'll get to that today. But back to uh, these cabinets over here. If you notice back there, I have a bunch of yard tools. This is a garage, so that's where we keep yard tools. Um, this cabinet is dedicated to things for doing yard work as well. So I want to move this first cabinet over there. Uh, so that kind of behind the door, that's sort of wasted space, and then all of those uh, 
yard implements can either hang or go up and, and lean in the corner there. That gets these things out of my way and um, uh, gives me a little more space here. There's also another cabinet here with a, a set of drawers on top of it. I don't know what I'll do with those drawers, but this cabinet here, I want to move over under uh, my, my side workbench here. There's a whole space here that's open under there where those can go. Right now I have two shop vacs and my propane heater. Um, those don't need to live there. Um, and if I can move this stuff over there, then it gives me a space to wheel my um, my table saw into and get it right out of my way when I'm working on other things. Uh, I can also, when I have the table saw out here, I can have the, the planer and or router table over there. Generally, one of those uh, three things is, is here where I'm working anyway. Uh, so, um, if table saw is here, I can have the planer and router table over there. Uh, or if I'm working on the router table, it can be here table saw can be there and I might be able to fit the planer over there as well. I think I'll get those two things done for sure today. Um, the other thing I would like to get done today is this uh, uh, bench at the back here. Right now it's got my uh, sander and my lathe and my grandfather's uh, tool chest. I, I think I did a, a little piece on that about a year ago. Anyway, all of those things I think can probably go on this side bench uh, here. This will kind of be my power tool bench where my sander will be, my lathe will be, I can put my uh, drill press up there, that kind of thing, and just keep uh, maybe five feet at the end as an as a, a auxiliary work area. Once I get those things off of that bench, that bench would be perfect as an assembly table with some modifications. One thing I want to do is uh, put some casters on the bottom. I have some casters for that as well. Um, and I want to cut the legs down so that when the casters are on, the, the surface of that table is no higher than the surface of my uh, table saw. That way I can use it as an outfeed table. The other thing that I want to do is the, the, the blue uh, counter that you've seen in my videos behind me. Uh, that was going to be for a, a new desk I want to make in the studio, uh, for the studio but it's too too short this way so I can't really use it for that and it occurred to me the other day that would be a really good top for this workbench uh, right now that workbench has four two by sixes across the top there are gaps in between them in the middle and it's not very straight it, it's not great for the kind of assembly table I need so I think I can cut that down and put that on top so hopefully I'll get that done today too but I'm going to start with getting these lights set up. So that's uh, all of the uh, lights uh, installed and strung. Uh, obviously they're working. I just need to aim these ones and then I'll turn off my LED panels and we'll see what the lighting is like here. I'm probably very overexposed right now. Yeah, this is going to work great. All right, well, uh, next thing is to get that corner cleared out and move uh, this left-hand cabinet over into that corner. So going to time-lapse this again, and uh, we'll have this done pretty quick, I hope. That went really well and really quick. I think that was maybe a total of 10 minutes. Uh, I was a little freaked out, was not too sure this was going to fit here, uh, but it fits perfectly. The door can't swing more than 90 degrees out of the way, but it can open 
as far as I needed to open to get in and out. And this space is opening up, which is what I wanted, so that's great. So, uh, same thing again. I have a bunch of stuff to move off of here and just get out of my way. I have to move my uh, uh, shop vacs and my uh, propane heater out from underneath the uh, cabinet over here, or the bench over here. And uh, probably going to have to empty this cabinet. It's full of a bunch of tools. Alright, well that's the cabinet moved over there. Uh, this area cleared away. Just need to sweep under there. I'm going to move the table saw into there and then I'll see if I have enough time to tackle this. I'm starting to get tired. Well, I feel like I've had enough for today. I didn't get that uh, assembly table. I'm going to leave that for another day, but I did do some sort of sorting out and organizing a few things. I got a little bit more mess than I wanted to leave, but uh, I should be able to take care of that over the next few days and we'll be back to uh, amp and guitar building in the next video. Well, uh, I thought I was done uh, doing my uh, productive procrastination day. I finished um, shooting everything up until now uh, about a week ago and then a few days ago I had a, a, a day just suddenly free up on me so I got to spend another eight or so hours out here doing a few more things. Um, I was kind of a little bit um, disappointed when I thought I was done because there was a bunch of things I didn't get done out here that I wanted to get done. So when I had that day free up, it was like, yay, hooky day. I did a few other things out here and I didn't film them, but I'm going to uh, show you uh, what I did or at least kind of detail it. So first of all, uh, down at the other end of the shop, uh, I have now pushed my uh, table saw there. I took the bench away from there. I moved it over here, which is where it's going to live when I'm not using it. Um, so this makes it really easy to get my table saw in and out. I just usually I have it right here when I'm working on it, and when uh, when I need something else in this space, I can just wheel the table saw back to the garage door uh, at the back of the shop here. And then I have all this space free. My router table is, is over here now, so behind where I usually work. And when I need it, I just can slide it out here. The thing I did that I'm really excited about is uh, I reset all these cabinets. I pushed them together, uh, pushed them to the back of the wall so that I have an overhang on the, on the countertop here. So I can use that for clamping. I also have an overhang at the side. So I can uh, use that edge for clamping. Uh, the cabinets being pushed back to the wall now uh, gives me uh, the feeling of a little more room because they're not, they're not out here where they used to be. The other thing that I did was I moved this whole bench down a bit, which gave me room over by my uh, uh, tool chest to slide in uh, the tool stand for my planer. So now I can get things right out of the way and I have a lot of big space here. Um, so the assembly table, when I get it done, can just slide out here uh, into the working position. Uh, my router table, same thing, can just slide to here. Uh, the planer, which I don't use as much, so it just I pull it out and bring it down here. And then of course the table saw. The other thing that I did uh, was as I moved this bench down um, it took up uh, a lot of uh, the wasted space over at the end and left just enough room for me to put my dust extractor my bigger shop vac so the dust extractor gets used for uh, my table saw and my planer uh, right now that's that's all that gets used for the bigger shop vac I use on my router table my uh, my sander, my uh, miter saw, and uh, my my little crappy bandsaw if I ever use it. I think that thing's not long for the world. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up this camera and sort of just uh, this little handheld and sort of give you a better view of what's what's going on here.
so there we are, uh, my tool chest uh, right there, and my planer. Uh, this is sort of the auxiliary sort of a space that I left for um, tools and things that I'm working on. So this is generally where I stand, uh, and so that's handy to have right there. Uh, you can see I'm already getting a little more clutter there. I've got to work on that. But down at the other end of this bench, it's, it's kind of my power tool bench. So what I've got here, I've got my uh, WorkSharp 3000 sharpening station, which I can move out of the way when I need to use my drill press. Uh, then next to that is my, my sander. So these two things get used a lot, my drill press and my sander. So I wanted them sort of close to where I'm usually working. And um, um, there's nothing really in the way. I can just plug them in and, and, and start working with them. Then down here, I don't use the miter saw as much, so it's the next one down here, but it's really accessible, and I can push the um, I can push the sander back, pull the uh, pull the uh, miter saw forward a bit, and uh, and I I can use that along here. I'll probably make some uh, some spacers uh, if I'm cutting uh, if I'm cutting long um, stock uh, that I can just use to sort of hold those up and keep everything level. Then over here I have the uh, bandsaw of shame, we'll call it, a uh, little bit of extra uh, dust collection hose. I need to store that up in the loft eventually. And then back over behind here is my lathe, which uh, I've had for about five years and I think I've, I've used it for minor things twice. Uh, some shims uh, there, uh, that needs to go stored away as well. I need to figure out what to do with this portable workbench. Um, like I say back here, I've got my uh, dust collector. Um, speaking of the, the, the dust collector, um, I noticed here working a couple days, even just cleaning up, not using tools, a garage is a dusty place. Um, and I really notice, I'm still noticing, you know, three days later, I'm still noticing a, a sort of cough in my throat from dust just from sweeping out here. That really got me thinking about dust collection. So there's two things that I'm doing about my dust collection out here. One is on that uh, uh, that extractor back there, the, the four inch uh, dust collector. Uh, I'm going to get a HEPA canister for it. So that will help a lot when I'm using that. The other thing that I did, and you probably hear it, is I jerry-rigged a, uh, a box fan. Uh, so that's just sitting on the end of the workbench here. That's a uh, MERV 16 filter, uh, just uh, uh, one that we had for uh, our furnace in the basement. Obviously it's a little too big, like I say, just jerry-rig this for now. Uh, but eventually what I'm going to do is get some 20 by 20 uh, filters, um, build a frame around that, and I'm going to mount it uh, up above where I work. But even already now with that on, I'm noticing how much clearer the air feels uh, in here right now. Uh, it's been running for about an hour as I was doing a few other things. So, dust collection lives over here. Uh, the, the hose uh, up there is uh, just long enough to come out to where uh, the table saw is. Maybe it actually be a little too short, so I may put a, a longer one on there. I do have a longer one, and then it can come out here where the table saw is or the planer is usually used. I'm trying to keep those uh, hoses as short as possible um, and when I was wheeling that around that hose was perfect but now I want to kind of just leave that back there so it's always out of the way and uh, a longer hose I don't think is going to be a big problem especially if I add that HEPA canister on there which will increase the CFM of the dust collector. So again, uh, like I say, table saws back here. Oh. One thing I found was an, an old clamp rack I had made and, and some other little tool racks and things uh, that I had just stored away. Um, I'm going to uh, put those up so I can kind of clean up my, my, uh, my clamp racks and things. Uh, back there, you know what that's about. Uh, that's all yard stuff. Uh, over here is that bench. So. One thing I didn't get to do was put the casters on there. I'm going to, to make some flip casters. I have an idea for, for that, and I didn't get the top put on yet. So that's for my next uh, uh, productive procrastination day. Um, also up top there, that, that's my, uh, my grandfather's tool chest. When he moved over to Canada uh, from Europe, 
almost a hundred years ago now, the first thing he did was build that tool chest and outfit. And uh, I've inherited that. Uh, some of his tools are still in there too. There's a, a nice saw till in there with, with three really good hand saws in there. They're a little rusty, so I'm going to clean them up. But that's, that's just a cool heirloom piece. But it doesn't really need to live there. I'm not sure where I'm going to put that. So again, like I say, my, my clamp rack, a little bit of clutter here. Uh, not as bad as things were. Um, but uh, like I say, another uh, productive procrastination day will take care of that. We'll get the casters and top done for that. I'm also going to do some flip casters on my, uh, my router table. And right now, there are actually uh, some fridge casters on the bottom of my, uh, my planer stand. Um, I have enough casters for all of this stuff, so I may make flip casters for that as well. Although the truth is, these fridge casters are working okay uh, on there. Uh, they don't swivel but when I bring it out I can just kind of lean it on two of the uh, sets of casters and, and, and twist it like that, so that's fine. This sort of monstrosity of a shelf, I need it to store things and you might have seen, I used to have it up here, it was just taking up so much space on that bench, I just decided to move it down over there, it can live there for now. I do still have some things to, to kind of straighten up and clean up out here, but I feel like it can work here. It doesn't feel like so much clutter now. Um, so I'm really happy. I had a couple of days of just doing some productive procrastination, and I got some things accomplished, and I feel like I can work a lot better in here now. It just feels so good to walk in here and see all this space, and then just bring things out as I need them. Uh, it just really makes the shop feel like it's a lot bigger and a lot more usable. So that's kind of like um, my excellent adventure into uh, minor shop renovation. Uh, it kind of another shop tour again. I know I just did one about a month ago, but this is a little bit uh, uh, kind of showing the progression towards making it more usable. Another thing I got to do is get up in my loft. I got a bunch of junk up there to get rid of. Um, I've got a few things kind of around here that I don't need, so probably a trip to the eco station is going to happen at some point as well. So, like always, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this purely an entertainment video. Uh, if you're interested in my band One Soul Thrust, our links to Patreon are in the description below as always. And until next time, we'll see you.